Jasper community celebration of the area's German heritage came about after two generations experienced forced suppression of their German culture, beginning at the end of World War I. Three months after the armistice was signed ending that war, Indiana became one of 14 states to ban the teaching of German. Several Strassenfest organizers remember their ancestors speaking German in their homes. You know, my father uh, studied German when he was in school, and when World War I broke out, they had to quit that, and so then it was only English. Until World War I, the newspaper was still in German, okay? And German, they spoke German in school, and they changed it. When my dad was um, growing up, they spoke German at home. He didn't learn any English until he went to first grade at Ireland. That was the first time he learned English. So he didn't speak English as a native language, he spoke German as a native language. My grandmother, uh, especially, spoke quite a bit of German, not totally, but uh, that's where I guess I, and then my dad did, and my mom did a little bit. My dad spoke German, my mother did not. So consequently, I didn't, learned German when I was a kid, like a lot of my friends that lived out on the farms or whatever, or with a family that spoke German. So I, I, I glind a so. And of course the German speaking went down. German never came back till probably after World War II. We just grew up not really knowing much about our heritage, period. Like most people, my initial awareness that there was a German history to Jasper started with a meal at Schnitzelbach the German restaurant in town. Is das nicht ein Schnitzelbad? Ja, das ist ein Schnitzelbad. Ist das nicht ein Kutsch und Lauch? Ja, das ist ein Kutsch und Lauch. We just welcome everybody to, to come and we hope to have a good time here at the, here in, the, in Jasper and in our history. Our employees is just wonderful to work with. I guess we got 25, 30 that's been here over 20 years with us and some over 30 years. They treat the, the place as, as good than I do. Snitzelbank's history dates back to 1908. That's when Snitzelbank owner Larry Hanselman's great-grandfather Michael Hokasan owned a brickyard with his brother-in-law James Bates. In 1908, they built a small brick building across from the Hokasan brickyard, and Bates opened the Little Kentucky Saloon. A year later, the business was sold to another Hokusan in-law, Anthony Stryker, the husband of Michael Hokusan's daughter, Clara. Stryker operated the Little Kentucky Saloon through Prohibition. That's when the name Schnitzelbach was given to the business. Toots Holler, who had the rustic hair in Jasper after Prohibition, he took it over in 1934. And he had the Schnitzelbach painted on the walls and uh, started the German tradition here and, and uh, had it to 1937, and then Joe Shirley had it after that. My grandparents owned the building and the ground. She had an agreement uh, when she ran it out that uh, they had signed a 10 year lease, and when they got out of it, she was up in age, and my parents were up there, and I didn't want it to get away, so I talked my wife into uh, starting out. And we it was a neighborhood bar in 61, and we was here about six months. And, Jasper Engine Exchange started right across the street, so we had a, a pretty nice business to start out with right away. And the Schnitzelbank was a little bitty restaurant. Right on the street, it was a little brick, little brick building. 
And he bought that, Larry did. When the Hanselmans took over Schnitzelbank in 1961, Jasper's now famous German restaurant was surprisingly German in name only. But when we had the neighborhood bar, we didn't really push that much. It was had a German name, but uh, that was about it. And so he started asking his local people that worked for him to ask if they had any German recipes that they brought over from Germany. And we still use those recipes today. Two ladies that were really uh, uh, chefs, and uh, between the two of them, they come up with all of the recipes. The wife and I, for the first month, we didn't hardly get out of the place. We was interviewing help and everything, getting it started, because we was overwhelmed, I guess, to, to really start out with. But uh, it's been a success since it's, it's, it's started. We went from a little tavern in 1961 when Dad bought it, in 71, he tore that little tavern down and that's where the, the restaurant started. And we've since built on to it three times. We also own the, the hotel next door and we got our own catering division too. We cater 24 seven. If you want a meal at 1 a.m. in the morning, we'll be there cooking it with our trucks, hot on the spot. We also have the Clubhouse 61 that's over on the north end of town for weddings and the breweries underneath that. My son, that was his ambition to uh, have the brewery, so he got that started. The beer goes along with the German food. I've always wanted a brewery. I always dabbled in making my own beer. We kind of brought it up to Grandpa. He kind of shied away at first, but uh, he was like, well, if that's what you guys want to do. And so uh, Alan and uh, my brother Nathan and I, uh, we, we started up Schnitz Brewery. We opened in 2015. The brewery's been a way to get our name even out there further. I can't say enough about it. I mean, we, we really enjoy what we do. Trust Fest, that, that's our, our busiest week of the year by far. It's a Saturday night from noon to close every day at the restaurant over there. I believe the Hanselman's decision to launch a menu of traditional German food at Schnitzelbank marked the beginning of the reemergence of a culture that had been stifled for over two generations. The success of the menu change at Schnitzelbank helped set off a chain of events that would transform Jasper into a community that is now defined by its German heritage.